Tory in the house. Some say it's a modern piece of true art. Some proudly proclaim it to be at the top of the top of their favorite anime lists. It truly is the eighth wonder of this marvelous world. It is... Cory in the House. In 2008, Cory in the House for the Nintendo DS graced the shelves of millions of stores all around the world. And by world, I mean North America and Australasia only. It's an adventure stealth video game directed by Lyndon H. Moore III. An adventure stealth video game. I honestly just can't wait. Ah, here we go. I'm the new kid moving in, getting it done, and I'm officially the candidate for having some fun, you know. You better calm down, Corey. I'm talking about an all-out party, and we're getting it started. Mr. President, you mind some electric guitar? Washington, D.C. will never be the same. Corey, Corey, Corey in the house. Yeah! It's a party every Corey, week, baby. Corey, 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 check it out. That's right, I'm in the house. You're gonna shake it up and change it. Shake it, it up. all and rearrange it. Just a little bit. Got a new plan, hey, Uncle Sam. Look out now. We've got Corey in the house. Corey in the house. I'm so sorry. This is a small thing, but can I just point out the menu sounds here? <laughs> This makes me already just want to shut the game off. There's the man of the hour. I'm your man! Episode 1, American Businessman, Day 1, Morning. Hey dad, did you hear my presidential bobblehead won first prize in the Wacky Wild Toys contest? I knew you could do it, son. And they're sending me a boatload of them so I can sell them to tourists. Hello, money! <laughs> Wait. There's a laugh track in the game. They put a laugh track in the game. If this writing isn't funny enough for you, there's your cue to know when to laugh. So the deal here is Corey Baxter, lovable businessman, won a bobblehead contest and as such is getting a ton of them that he plans to sell to poor, unsuspecting souls, but that takes a turn when the president's snotty little daughter <sighs> trades them for a phone. So you head off on your mission to get them back. Chicken? Me? I'm so brave, I don't even eat chicken. All right, finally, here we go. And a ghost just walked out of Cory. Cory's a ghost, there's, there's a ghost in the White House. You're not gonna address the ghost? What the hell is that? I'm not buying into your ghost tricks. So unfortunately, there's no actual cool Cory ghost feature in this game. The game just decides when it wants to teach you something to unexplainably have the soul of Cory fucking Baxter walk out and guide you along your way. So once the game teaches you how to tap a screen and press the A button, it leaves you here. Could I interact with this? You know, maybe light it up and, you know, jump in? Sadly not. Oh, all right, great. Let's just design this wide open door for the sole purpose of wasting the player's time. Oh no, poor Cory's been caught. Rats. Rats. I don't know about this writing or anything, but does anybody actually say rats? See, she gets where I'm coming from too. Good save, Cory. Good save. Cory, I need you to get rid of those nuclear Nakishkas. Oh yeah, those nuclear Nakishkas. I sure as hell remember those from the TV show. Nuclear who? The little Bahavian pastries that burst when you eat them? Who do- who do- does any of this sound like normal speech? So once you go and get the Bahavian nuclear Nakishkas out of the fridge, you head on upstairs to find their secret service agents looming about. And more ghosts! Hey agents, don't you- don't you see the ghosts? Or is this some like, sixth sense stuff where only Cory sees these lost souls? So the ghost teaches you how to sneak around. Great. Gonna get those bobbleheads back. So then you find this lemon sauce sitting on a tree. Use that to put on your Bahavia nuclear Nakishkas and in turn now have the ability to throw Nakishkas at people to stun them. This game astounds me with its features. Truly a masterpiece. 10 out of 10. IGN. Huh? Yep. Seems pretty effective, all right. So now equipped with the power of sneaking and throwing Bahavian pastries, you can now explore and find the bobbleheads located around the White House by accessing new locations. In this room, Sophie here teaches you about key codes and using the cell phone she had to crack them open. Good God, Corey, she's just a child. 
So keypad cracking is literally just punching in the numbers and symbols that pop up on the top screen in time. Exciting. Wow. That was exhilarating. So you head through the passage, pick up another bobblehead box in the room, and step on a switch for another passage, leading you into the Oval Office. Where another lifeless soul of Cory shows you that you can save by standing on a presidential seal. Game mechanics! So go around, use all the special little mechanics, and get the rest of the bobbleheads. Once you've done that, you're finally ready to hit up the mall and sell your bobbleheads. And don't worry, there's a mini game for getting to the mall too! You literally just pick the direction the car needs to go in. Wow. So you arrive at the mall and first things first. The hell is a presidential seal just doing chilling in the middle of the mall's floor? You're grasping at straws now, Lyndon H. Moore III. So you go from shopkeeper to shopkeeper asking if they can sell your bobbleheads and naturally, you've gotta fix something for them in order for that to happen. You find this dude a copy of the game Kung Fu Cats 3 which legitimately sounds better than what I am actually playing right now. Manoush? The Bahavian singer? He's phenomenal? What's with Bahavia? Listen up, bobblehead boy, I won't repeat this. At the profile select screen, press up five times on the plus control pad, then press the Y button once before choosing an empty profile. This will give you $50 extra cash on top of health pickups. That's all I have to say. So you're telling me that this far into the game, the game tells you to restart just so you can have extra money each time you pick up health? That's a new way of keeping people playing, I suppose? So for this music shopkeeper, you have to play the drums in order to apparently tune them so you can get her to sell your bobbleheads in return. Wow, this is great. Kill me. Then you gotta fix this guy's wires in his signs in order to get him to sell your bobbleheads. What a blast! In your country, Bahavia? Help me. So you talk to this perfume saleswoman. She says she got given the game by mistake and wants relaxing music. Okay. Go down and talk to the music shopkeeper for the game, get the music from the music shop, go back to the perfume lady, give her the relaxing music, and she says she left the game by some bench, find the game by the bench, and give it back to the game shopkeeper, and finally, you're done. So, you sold all the bobbleheads. Now what? Jam session with your best friends! No... Why... I don't even know how to do this one... So you finish the pointless jam, go home, get a call that something's gone wrong at school, and you speed right on over... Hi... Octane... So it turns out that the only logical problem that could happen in this timeline happens. Yep, that's right, your bobbleheads have brainwashed everyone in the entire school. Nope, not kidding about that one. The story is actually that everyone at school is brainwashed. Yep. If you want to just, you know, pause the video for a moment to kind of take that in, I, I don't mind. We're kind of all equally in this together at this point, so... So you go around checking classrooms and doors until you find a vent that you can send a remote-controlled miniature fly that a nerdy kid gave you in order to better access the rooms inside the school. The controls are extremely awful, too sensitive, and this minigame just makes me want to cry, but I sure as hell made it through the vent. Woo. You find your friend and you're given the task of finding a key to unlock the locked doors you previously could not get into. Great. You get into the gym here, and you find your first mini-boss of the game. So the deal here is you have to step on every switch to make them blue, and once that happens, it causes a speaker to overload in the gym, causing the girl that's hypnotized to get dazed, after which you need to, quote, splatter with a Nakishka. Easy enough. Okay, here we go, finally. God damn it. Okay, wait for her to come over. All right, now. Go, 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 go. Wait, no! Oh no, I've been hypnotized. <sighs> this is great. Wait, no! You start from the beginning of the entire level? Nope, I'm not dealing with this. I already played too much of this as it is. I'm straight up done with this game. This game is straightforward, really cheap, boring mechanics, really simple gameplay, confusing, nonsensical story, rage-inducing, but if I have to say one thing, there is one great quality about this game. 
It's a great giant fucking meme, I'll give it that much. Save yourself the trouble. Don't get the game, don't play it, and play something that actually fulfills you and gives you a sense of happiness. I feel like the ghosts featured throughout this game are those of the ones who played it and lost their souls and wills to the dastardly Cory Baxter, forever bound to teach you how to press the A and X buttons. Or the game's just a piece of crap. You, actually, you know what? No, yeah, it's, it's just bad. 10 out of 10 IGN.